Hello everyone, and welcome to another Dead by Daylight video. Today will be part two of my explaining every single survivor tech in the game. And this is a very highly anticipated video because the first one got 10,000 views for some reason. So <laughs> I hope this lives up to the, to the last one. Most of the techs that I'm going to talk about in this video are very obscure, weird techs that are not even really techs. They're just game mechanics that people do and then call them techs you know but since i am saying that i'm explaining every single survivor tech in the game i think it would be unfair to not talk about these even though they're kind of not very uh complicated to pull off <laughs> so do not be surprised if you see me talk about the walk tech where you walk and again this is only part two i don't know if i covered all of the text in the game most likely not so if you still have some text that i didn't talk about in this video or in the last one please make sure to comment them, and if I get enough of them, I'll make part 3. Okay, so the first tech that I want to talk about here is the point tech. And this one should really be called like the gesture tech or something, but I guess that's too much of a mouthful, so let's just call it the point tech. What you need to understand here to understand how this tech works is that there is a mechanic in Dead by Daylight that allows you to negate the dying animation when you get hit into the dying state. And that is by pointing or waving the killer towards you, or like doing the, the wave thing. If you gesture, as soon as the killer hits you, your character, instead of doing the animation, the whole flip and then fall on the ground dramatically, he just kind of plants on the ground. And this is useful because if you do that, you can instantly move. In contrast to when you don't do any gestures, your character has to do the whole animation and then wait a little bit to then be able to move. This is really useful in scenarios where you don't really know if you're gonna reach the exit gate in time or like reach the exit in time and the killer is right behind you and you don't know if you're gonna make it so then you stop and gesture because if the killer hits you into the dying state, you can move instantly. And most of the times, if you're close enough, you can make it to the exit gate when you otherwise wouldn't if you didn't gesture because the killer has to wipe his blade or like do the the hit animation to then be able to pick you up and if you're instantly moving after you're downed you can make it to somewhere like a pallet or something this is also useful if you're doing like the power struggle build where you want to die on a pallet but sometimes the killer hits you away from the pallet what you can do is just gesture on the pallet and then you're gonna just plant right there. Since we're on the topic of endgame techs here, I wanna talk about the one tech that I think everyone should know because the amount of times I died because people didn't know about this is insane. And I'm pretty sure you died to it too. And that is the heal tech. The heal tech works on the same premise as the CJ tech does in which when a survivor is interacting with something or someone, the killer cannot do anything to that same object. And that applies to downed survivors too. So when there's a downed survivor, if another survivor is healing him, is currently healing the survivor that's downed, the killer cannot pick the survivor up. He has to cancel the survivor healing animation to then wipe his blade and be able to pick the survivor up, right? And I'm pretty sure you can already see where this is useful. In endgame scenarios, sometimes a survivor dies in the exit gate and you, you, you see that the killer is going to be able to pick him up. What you do in that case is you run up to the survivor and start healing him. The killer cannot pick the survivor up when you're healing him. It's simple as that. The only thing the killer can do there, in that case, is hit the survivor that's healing him wait until the, the hitting animation is done, and then pick the survivor up. This is useful because when the killer is doing the hitting animation, the survivor that's down can crawl to the exit gate and escape while the, the killer is wiping his blade. And this can be done multiple times because if you're healing the survivor, you also plant on the ground, just like the point tech. Like, you can heal the survivor even when you're injured because if you plant on the ground, the killer still has to wipe his blade so you get enough time to crawl to the exit gate most of the time. The fall tech is something that I'm not sure that that's the, the real name of this tech, but I'm just going to call it the fall tech because, well, I don't know. This can be done in two ways, either on the basement of any map that has a basement that you can fall into and on the stairs in the newest map, the Eerie of Crows. Let's talk about the one on the Eerie of Crows first, because this is the one uh, that I do a lot. What you need to understand here is that the survivor 
most of the time is slower than the killer. And if a survivor drops down from like a balcony or something or the stairs, he's gonna fall a shorter distance than the killer because the killer is faster, so he's gonna glide way past where the survivor fell into. So how you apply this to attack is basically you go up the stairs on the Eerie of Crows and you make it so the killer chases you on the way to the stairs. And then you have to make sure that the killer sees you going down the stairs and falling into the second flight of stairs. And when he tries to chase you that same direction, he's gonna go way past you because he was he's way faster than you and fall into the ground. And then you can go back up the stairs and make some distance. The next one is the basement fall tech. <laughs> I saw this one on an Aaron video and I'm not sure that this even really works, but it's it should be really fun to pull off. When the basement is on the shack and the killer is chasing you on the shack, you can go inside of the shack and then you make sure that the killer sees you going into the basement. And if the killer is smart, if the killer, I don't know, if the killer just falls for it, it, it it's not a matter of intelligence here, I don't know. But sometimes the killer is gonna drop inside of the basement because he sees you going into the basement and, he, and he's gonna try to cut you off. So he's gonna drop down after you and then you can go back up and make some distance. <laughs> the next tech is the corner tech. <laughs> And this one is it's not very explainable, like it's kind of hard to explain this one. It's more intuitively explained rather than me like actually explaining it because it's not really a mechanic, it's just you messing with the killer's head. It's like you're watching the corner tech happen right now in the video and I'm guessing you can understand how it works, but yeah, I'm gonna try to explain it. No, yeah. So the corner tech happens whenever you're getting chased somewhere that has a corner that you can hide in. And if the killer is way too focused on what you're gonna do, if, if you're gonna like drop the pallet or hit the window or something, he's not always going to be thinking of looking into the corners because the killer is in first person, he's sometimes going to lo lose sight of you and you can hide in a corner and the killer is just going to be lost. You'd be surprised of how many times this works. It, it, it not only works on baby killers but like try hard killers sometimes fall for it too because they're way too focused on what you're going to do or like the optimal play. The corner tech usually happens on the shack because when the killer is chasing you he's trying to hit you before you get to the window most of the time right? And if he's way too focused on that you can sometimes hide in a corner and then the killer is going to be looking at the window and then he's going to be confused for like a second or two and then you can run backwards into the entrance of the shack and get one more loop in the shack or something. But there's one unspoken rule here that you gotta do in order for the corner tech to work is that whenever you're trying to perform a corner tech, you have to ask yourself out loud, is he safe? Because no one is really safe at the end of the day. Okay, so the bush tech, um, you hide in a bush. That's what you do. Mid chase, you just hide in a bush. <laughs> <laughs> the tree tech. You um you use the tree to juke the killer. It sometimes works. The breakable wall tech. There's only really one mechanic you have to understand here in order to do this. And that is the same as you had to learn for the window tech. That is when you have an item like a key or a map or clairvoyance that is not an item that's a perk. Basically anything that has a bar below that you can activate and keep the bar active, it has a weird effect that makes your character ha have no collision for the duration of the bar. And you also gotta have urban vision for this to be like somewhat decent. Basically when a killer is breaking a breakable wall, he is locked into the animation of breaking the breakable wall, right? And when he's done breaking the breakable wall, you can activate the item crouch with urban evasion and walk through them. If the killer is tall enough, he's not even going to be able to see you crouching through him, but if the killer is shorter, then he might be able to see you, in which case you're dead, but then again, uh, if you want to stay alive, you shouldn't even be doing this, so. <laughs> okay, so this is not really a tech, but trust me when I say that I'm going to talk about every single fucking tech in this game. You know, even if it's not a tech, I'm talking about it. And it is the moonwalk tech. I don't think anyone's ever called the moonwalk the moonwalk tech, but I'm, a, I'm going to be the first one, okay? But I cannot explain this to you because, well, I'm just not good enough. So I'm going to send you over to my best friend, Mr. Livepuff. Hello, it's me, Live, Live, Livepuff. Basically, in Dead by Daylight, there's a whole animation when you when you turn your character around. You can see that it's not instant, right? In most games you play, when you're when you're doing this and you turn around, like your character actually just turns around. In this game, you see that there's there's a whole animation here. I'm pressing W. Like there's there's this whole animation, right? And the moonwalk works on the premise that you never allow your character to finish that turning animation like this. And how you do this is you gotta spam A and D 
really fast or not really fast you gotta find a rhythm it's all about the rhythm like, you have to find a rhythm where your character is just never allowed to turn around and it's kind of hard to pull off like the first times you try this you're not gonna get it trust me you're not gonna get it but if you keep doing this every game you play and every time you walk you're eventually gonna get the hang of it you know you can do it both ways you can do it when uh with your back turned to the screen too and you can do it facing the screen I think facing the screen is a little bit easier. And this is something that most people don't know, but, but the characters have different movements and they have different timings. So if you're trying to moonwalk with one character, the other character is going to be a little bit different. Not too different, but it's going to be a little bit different. And yeah, back to back to a uh, post puff. Thank you very much, Mr. Live Puff. Uh, it's me, post puff. And uh, I appreciate your, uh, your tutorial because I, I wouldn't be able to do anything without you, man. The reverse palette tag is something that should be fixed because they act actively tried to fix it, but it's still in the game. Like people think that it's fixed, it's not. It's just way, way harder to pull off now. And I'm pretty sure that it's impossible to do this if you don't get hit. I might be wrong here on this, but I think that the only way to actually get a reverse pallet tech done is to uh, get hit and then throw the pallet. The reverse pallet tech is when you stun the killer on one side, but then you fucking send the killer over to the other side. <laughs> and it's really, really funny, but the only way you ever get this is if the, the killer has really high ping and a shitty aim, or if the killer hits you. That, that's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna say, but I might be wrong. It used to be that even if the killer was stunned, like on the edge of the pallet, he would get sent to the other side of the pallet. It was it was really funny, but they kind of fixed this. So yeah. The Bubba Breakable Wall Tech, I don't know if that's what people call it, but uh, it, it's just intuitive to call it that. I want to thank this guy for leaving the comments for this tech, because pretty much all of the other techs that people commented about, I already had on my notepad to do for, for part two. But this one I'd never include if he didn't leave that comment. So thank you very much, man. So you know how Bubba uh, revs his chainsaw, and that chainsaw can be used to either down survivors or break pallets and breakable walls, right? It turns out there's a there's a unintended mechanic, I think. I don't think that's intended. That if you're revving your chainsaw towards a survivor and that survivor crouches at the corner, like the, the very corner of a breakable wall, the chainsaw is gonna prioritize breaking the breakable wall over downing the survivor. I had to try this a few different times with my friend, but it eventually worked. So this is not 100% of the time, it's not gonna always work, but when you find yourself in a situation where there's a bubble revving his chainsaw at you and you have nowhere to run to, you're just gonna die. Try crouching near a pallet or a breakable wall and try to do it in a corner too. Because Bubba might prioritize breaking the breakable wall over killing you. Okay, so this is another tech that I don't know the name of. And I'm not going to say that this has no name. Because the last time I said this, I got like 555 different comments telling me that the tech actually had a name. So yeah, I I'm, I'm just going to say I don't know the name of this one, okay? But I see this one very often in Aaron's videos. So I'm just going to call it the, the Blind Vault tech. How this tech works is whenever you stun the killer with a pallet, you have to start blinding him instantly. And if you manage to get the blind before the killer starts breaking the pallet, you can slow vault that pallet so you don't give the killer a notification that you're slow vaulting that pallet and he has no way to know that you're actually vaulting that pallet because you make no noise and he's blinded. And then you vault right back while he's still blinded. And this works because the killer, when he gets blinded at a pallet that he just got stunned on, he's going to be spamming spacebar to uh to break the pallet right and what you're doing there is basically you're stalling him you're not letting him break the pallet until he is uh, i don't know able to and when you vault back you make the noise notification so the killer is probably going to swing so that's it's just a funny tech again not a tech but i'm going to talk about it because this is this this one is actually really useful the fake window tank how this works is you just, you just fake the window you know <laughs> you give the killer the body language that he needs to to think that you're going to vault that window so you get some distance from the window and then you run straight into the window but you don't actually vault it you only really do this when the killer is gonna catch up to you before you reach something else so you fake the window so he swings and you get some distance this is actually like a real legit mechanic that you can use to uh, extend chases and if the killer swings you get some distance because he swings and he has to wait until the the, the attack animation ends to uh, keep chasing you so 
yeah, very useful. And that is gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as you did the last one. And yeah, I just wanna thank every single one of you that watched my last video. The channel growth has been insane, you know? And like, sometimes I, I don't even feel like recording anything, but I just remember that you guys are enjoying it, like actually enjoying my videos this time. And uh, it just makes me happy, you know? People say I'm underrated, but I don't really think I'm underrated at all. I, I started making videos like three months ago, you know? <laughs> like this channel growth has been insane. I'm very happy with it. And as long as you guys keep enjoying my videos, I'll keep making them. And I'm gonna try to be more active on Discord now because I saw that people are joining it and I wasn't even replying to anyone. So if you wanna talk to me, join my Discord, follow my Twitter, uh, subscribe to both, both of my channels and uh, be happy, you know? I'll be there with you on a spiritual level if you're happy. <laughs> what am I talking about? And yeah, I'll see you guys whenever I post another video, probably in like four days or three days or something. Woof.